Hi guys, this is IGCSC O level chemistry paper 22, November 2019, question 1. The rate of diffusion of a gas depends on its molecular mass and the temperature. Which combination of molecular mass and temperature gives the slowest rate of diffusion? So, in order to diffuse quickly, the molecular mass must be less and the temperature must be high. So, for the slowest rate of diffusion, the molecular mass must be high and the temperature must be low. So, high molecular mass eliminates options C and D and low temperature eliminates option A, making option B the correct option for this question. Question 2. A student is asked to measure the time taken for 0 0.4 grams of magnesium carbonate to react completely with 25.0 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid. Which piece of apparatus does the student need? So, the student needs to measure the time taken. So, it, he would need a stopwatch, he or she. Uh, in order to weigh the magnesium carbonate, a weighing balance would be required. And in order to measure 25.0 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid, since its accuracy is up to a decimal place, we would be utilizing either a pipette or a burette because both of them are used for accurate volume measurements. So, a balance is required, a stopwatch is required, a pipette is required. These are correct. Next, balance, stopwatch, but a thermometer is not required. Balance, pipette, thermometer is not required. Stopwatch, pipette, thermometer is not required. So the only option with all three correct pieces of apparatus is option A, making A the correct option for this question. Question three, substance Q was investigated using chromatography. The chromatogram is shown. The diagram is not drawn to scale. So we have the baseline where Q is placed. We have the distance traveled by Q. That would be 83 minus 13 because 13 is the distance from the start of the paper till the baseline. And the distance traveled by the solvent would be 114 minus 13, which would be the distance traveled or the distance covered from the start of the paper till the baseline. So RF value is solute front upon solvent front. So the solute front would be 83 minus 13. And the solvent front would be 114 minus 13. This will give us an RF value of 0 0.69, making option C the correct option for this question. Question 4. Which statement about an ionic compound is not correct? It conducts electricity when dissolved in water. Yes, it does. It has a high melting point due to strong attractive forces between ions. High melting point is correct. Strong attractive forces should have been more accurately mentioned as strong electrostatic force of attraction. But let's let's uh, accept this. This is correct as well. It has a regular lattice of oppositely charged ions in a sea of electrons. No, sea of electrons is a term used to describe the structure of metals, not ionic compound. So this is incorrect. And the ionic bonds are formed between metallic and non-metallic elements. Yes, the cation is a metallic ion and the anion is a non-metallic ion. So this is correct as well. So the correct option for this question is option C. Question 5. What is the total number of electrons in one molecule of ammonia? So nitrogen belongs to group 5. When it forms three covalent bonds, one of its electrons would be involved in each covalent bond formation and two electrons, because it belongs to group 5, remain unbonded, while each hydrogen atom will provide one electron in the covalent bond. So what is the total number of electrons in one molecule of ammonia? So this would be 2, 4, 6, and 8. So the outermost electron, con outermost shell contains 8 electrons. And since nitrogen belongs to the second period, it has two shells. So the first shell would contain 2 electrons. So this would give us a total of 10 
electrons in a molecule of ammonia. This makes option C the correct option for this question. Question 6. Rubidium has two isotopes, Rb85 and Rb87. Which statement explains why both isotopes have the same chemical properties? So they have the same number of protons. They do have the same number of protons, but protons are not responsible for the properties. They have the same number of outer shell electrons? Yes. Because they have got the same number of electrons, and electrons are involved in forming compounds. So having the same number of electrons would make them have the same chemical properties. They have different number of neutrons. That is true, but neutrons are not involved in the two isotopes having the same chemical properties. And they have different mass numbers. Yes, they have different mass numbers because they have got different number of neutrons and neutrons are not involved in defining the chemical properties. So this makes option B the correct option for this question. Question 7. Which statement about the structure and properties of silicon for oxide is not correct? It has a giant structure similar to that of diamond. Yes, it does. Both diamond and SiO2 have the same structure. It has a high melting point due to the strong attractive forces between the molecules. No, it is a giant covalent molecule. It is a single molecule. There is no attractive forces between molecules because the entire structure is a single molecule. So this is incorrect. C, there are strong covalent bonding between silicon and oxygen. This is true. There are no free electrons. So silicon for oxide does not contain electricity. This is true as well. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option B. Question 8. Which statement describes the structure of copper? It has a lattice of negative ions in a sea of electrons? No, positive ions. It has a lattice of negative ions in a sea of protons? No, positive ions in a sea of electrons. It has a lattice of positive ions in a sea of electrons? Yes, this is correct. It has a lattice of positive ions in a sea of protons? Incorrect. Therefore, option C is the correct option for this question. Question 9. Phosphorus reacts with oxygen to form phosphorus 3 oxide as shown. Which mass of phosphorus is of 3 oxide is produced from 6.2 grams of phosphorus? So according to this equation, phosphorus is to phosphorus 3 oxide has a molar ratio of 4 is to 2, which can be simplified to 2 is to 1. So if we have 2 moles of phosphorus, that means the mass of phosphorus would be 31 into 2. And this would produce the mass of P2O3 as 31 into 2 plus 16 into 3. So this would give us 62 grams of phosphorus producing 110 grams of P2O3. So if we have 6.2 grams of phosphorus, how much P2O3 will it produce? So this would become 6.2 upon 62 into 110, giving us a value of 11 grams. So this makes option C the correct option for this question. Question 10. Calcium carbonate is heated. Calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gases, gases are formed. The equation for the reaction is shown. 225 kg of calcium carbonate is heated until there is no further change in mass. The yield of calcium oxide is 85 kg. What is the percentage yield? So, in order to calculate the percentage yield, first we should calculate the MR of calcium carbonate, which is 100, and the MR of calcium oxide, which would be 56. So, 100 kgs would produce 56 kg of calcium oxide. So if we have 225 kgs, this would produce how many kgs of calcium oxide? So this would become 225 upon 100 into 56, giving us a mass of 
126 kg. So if this process was 100% efficient, we would end up with 126 kg of calcium oxide. However, the question says we end up with 85 kg of calcium oxide. So in order to calculate the percentage yield, we place 85 in the denominator, in the numerator, 126 in the denominator, multiply this by 100, we end up with a percentage value of 67.5%, making option C the correct option for this question.